Mariam's Magic, the story of mathematician Mariam Mirzahani, by Megan Reed, illustrations by Aliyah Jalil. Mariam Mirzahani was a storyteller. Every night before she went to bed, she would tell her sister tales of fierce adventurers, brave tricksters, and wizards with powers beyond compare. No matter what kind of trouble they got into, they used their wits to find a solution. Every day after school, she and her best friend Roya would roam the swoops and curves of her city's busy streets. Their favorite block was crowded with bookstores, and they spent long afternoons dreaming themselves into the plots of their favorite stories. And every weekend, she spread long rolls of paper on her bedroom floor, then crouched in a ball to scribble and color the world she imagined. They were intricate and beautiful, each detail designed to make her favorite scenes shine. Together, her arts and stories made magic. Miriam wanted to be a famous writer when she grew up. She loved her reading and art classes. During the war that tore her home country of Iran apart, girls and women hadn't been allowed to attend school with boys, or sometimes even at all. But after the war was over, politicians started new schools to allow girls talents to grow. You are part of a lucky generation, Miriam's mother told her. But when it came time for math each day, Miriam felt the opposite of lucky. Miriam was a storyteller. She was not a mathematician. The numbers made her head spin. How could she care about something so pointless and cold? She would rather doodle and dream. When Miriam was 12, her teacher announced that they would be learning geometry, a new kind of math. Miriam sighed. But geometry was different from any math she'd known before. Every number held a story. It made those numbers into shapes, and those shapes into pictures. One degree of difference could make a triangle acute or right. Removing a Y shape from the end of a line showed that it was a segment, not a ray. Miriam dreamed of magical shapes. They looked like bulging light bulbs and endless figure eights, and layers and layers of donuts. She made up fantastic tales about them. How many lines would it take to draw them? What kinds of patterns could cover them? If there were a hundred or a thousand or a billion shapes like them, could you tell the same stories about them all? Miriam came to love these number stories like she loved the characters from her favorite books. In high school, Miriam and Roya both entered the International Mathematical Olympiad, a competition for young mathematicians. They were the first girls to make the Iranian team. That first year, they each brought home a medal for their efforts, but it wasn't the grand prize. Miriam and Roya wanted to be heroines, the first girls to win first place for Iran. Together, they trained long hours to prepare for the next year's competition in Toronto, Canada. When the judges announced the grand prize, Roya and the team cheered loudly. Miriam had gotten a perfect score. Miriam was even more certain now that she wanted to devote her life to the stories numbers told. After college, she left Iran for graduate school at Harvard University in the United States. She and her professors would talk about new formulas and theories in English for hours while she scribbled notes in Farsi, her native language. When it was hard to solve a difficult equation, Miriam covered her house's floor with big sheets of paper and knelt to trace them with loops and lines, just as she had when she was young. By now, Miriam was married with a child of her own. She drew so much that sometimes her daughter, Anahita, would tell people proudly that her mommy was a painter. As she got older, Miriam's geometry stories and pictures became more complex. She wanted to stretch the limits of what humans understood about the idea of infinity, equations that went on and on without end. She crafted mathematical formulas as if she were plotting the twists and turns of a suspenseful novel. It's not only the question, but the way you try to solve it, she would tell her students. Miriam began to write papers about her findings. Other thinkers would gather from far and wide to hear her speak. For one tough problem, she imagined a twisty mirrored room where a thief was hiding. With the help of her pictures, Math told her where a security guard would have to stand to protect valuable treasures. People even called one of her discoveries the Magic Wand Theorem, 
because it worked like magic to solve many problems that scientists had been puzzling over for more than a hundred years. She explained it using the image of a pool table with balls that zigged and zagged forever. If you covered the balls in paint, how long would it take for their scattered paths to color the table completely? Merriam's magic wand, math, helped people all over the world. Astronauts could plot safer courses for their rocket ships. Meteorologists could predict weather patterns with more speed and accuracy. Doctors could understand how dangerous diseases grew and spread. And in 2014, Miriam received an email from the International Mathematical Union telling her that she had won the Fields Medal, the most important award in math, for her magic wand. She was the first woman and the first Iranian to ever receive the prize. Miriam was proud, but not boastful. She just wanted to help others discover the amazing worlds math helped her see. She couldn't believe that, as a child, she very nearly gave up on it. Now even more people knew about her talent, but she had a secret that only her closest friends and family knew. Optimistic, curious Miriam was sick with breast cancer. For three years, she continued storytelling as the cancer spread to her liver, her bones. When she died in 2017, her home country of Iran mourned, and her picture was on the front page of newspapers around the world. She represented bravery and courage, even though she was often the only woman in a classroom, the youngest to lead a research project, the smallest to speak in front of hundreds on a stage. She never let that stop her from sharing the extraordinary stories that numbers told. At Miriam's memorial, Roya, a math professor herself, spoke about her best friend. She told the story of a bright girl hungry for knowledge who also had a kind heart and a beautiful mind. She reminded the crowd that before Miriam was a mathematician, she was a storyteller. But magically, she was always meant to be both. Author's Note I first heard about Miriam and her magic wand theorem in her New York Times obituary after she died in 2017. When I saw that Miriam was the first woman to win the most prestigious prize in mathematics, it felt shocking that the barrier had only recently been broken in 2014. Sometimes it's difficult for me to wrap my head around the fact that there are still firsts for women to achieve, even though we know that talent, intelligence, and strength are qualities any person can possess. I was sad that I had learned about this heroic figure only after she had passed away. I wished I could have let her know how much I admired her. But I was enchanted by a tidbit near the end of the article. Dr. Mirzahani often dived into her math research by doodling on vast pieces of paper with equations at the edges. How exciting that a brilliant mathematician was also an artist who could bring the secrets of the infinite universe down to her living room floor. When I did more research and I learned that young Miriam actually disliked math as a child and tried to give it up, I was even more surprised. It reminded me uncomfortably of myself. I'm sure my teachers got tired of whi my whining about math. But one day a teacher overheard me complaining and handed me a play about algebra, Arcadia, by Tom Stoppard. I read it. I found math suddenly becoming real to me. And more than that, it became beautiful. I loved the idea that, along with lots of hard work, art and stories gave Miriam the unique view of the world that catapulted her to the top of her field. She didn't have to give up or hide her other interests, but instead transformed them into something important, brilliant, and groundbreaking. I still get confused by more abstract ideas in math. Trying to understand and then figuring out ways to write about Miriam's theorems was a challenge. But it reminded me that none of us is just one thing. Miriam was a storyteller who was also a mathematics genius. Other people are sports stars who sing, or chefs who are computer whizzes, or firefighters with green thumbs. There are entire universes of talents and skills, and just because you love one thing dearly doesn't mean you can't excel at another. In fact, combining them might be the ingredient that helps you think, imagine, and achieve like no one else can. I thought often about Miriam's daughter, Anahita, while writing this book, partly because Dr. Mirzahani reminded me of my own mother, Michelle. 
She was also an immigrant to the United States who worked long hours to become a professor and researcher while raising my sister and me. I really believe that good moms are math magicians in their own way. Above everything else, I hope that this version of Miriam's story captures even a little bit of what Anahita loved about her.